Anthony Harwick here with another YSN Hot Corner. And in this edition, I have a very special guest, Tatum Edwards. Tatum, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this week. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Now, I ask all my guests this because we cover so many high school sports at YSN. What was your kind of high school slash travel experience like? I know I'm asking you to go back in the day a little bit, but <laughs> what are some of your fond memories of, of playing in high school and playing in travel ball? Um, so my high school was pretty awesome. Um, so for people who don't know, I, um, grew up with my twin sister, Taylor, who also plays softball. Um, and we always had the same classes in high school. We always had the same kind of friend group. So, um, playing softball with her in high school was definitely fun. Um, people knew us as like TNT, the twins, um, so that was really cool experience. Um, we had a such a great um, softball field that we got to go to every day. So we were super lucky about that. Um, we went to CIF a few times. So um, that was super fun. We played with uh, Sierra Romero for a couple of years at our school. So we had a lot of um, great competition where I grew up. Um, we traveled a lot, different tournaments, things like that. Um, going into travel ball, I played with the Corona Angels, and I played with them since I was 12 years old until I graduated high school. Um, gosh, we had practice at least three times a week. Um, we had to drive about 30 or so minutes to Corona, um, where we would have practice most of the time. And um, it was basically just kind of like a grind. Now that I look back at it, um, it was a lot to do, but we loved it so much. Um, we had girls on our team that would travel from, you know, a couple hours away and come up to practice. And um, it was so competitive, but everyone loved it. And um, we had such a great time. We, Marty Tyson was our coach. And um, when we were younger, starting in about 14U, we would play up a lot on our gold team that we had. Um, so that would be 18 gold is what we called it. Um, we would have the opportunity to play up a lot um, against that gosh, could people go into UCLA's, the Washington's, um, those, it was Pac-10 back then. So um, just people who knew what it was going to be like to be able to compete at the highest level and we'd be able to practice with them and compete against them. So um, that was such an awesome experience. But we, um, I guess we kind of had rivalries against firecrackers and the bat busters growing up. So that was also really fun. Gosh, we, we just, Travel ball, looking back, was just such a fun experience because you got to compete every single day. Um, we had 20 girls on our team, so it wasn't just a um, you were going to be on the team and be able to play all the time. You really had to compete for your spot, just like it would be in college. So I think that was the coolest thing of, like, we got to really know what it was like to be on a competitive team before actually going to college. You grew up in such a different recruitment world than we live in now. Yeah. People could commit so early back then. Yeah. When did you kind of commit to, to Nebraska? Um, if I believe, oh my gosh, let me think back. It was the sophomore summer um, going into our junior year. So that little time frame in between that. So we, um, I guess... It was kind of late. I don't – now I'm looking at it, I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, it was about that time. It's crazy to think back then that sophomore summer is late to commit. I mean, what was it like going through as a young softball player knowing that you could be recruited and you had that kind of weight on your shoulders on, you know, coaches looking at you and mm -hmm. trying to expose yourself to coaches just in seventh or eighth grade? Um. It was kind of nerve wracking in the beginning because we got actually ended up getting our first ever letter um, in the mail from Nebraska where we ended up going. Um, but you know, like we would we would be getting these letters. This is a, it was a letter in the mail. They would send it to our house, and you know, it'd be like camps or clinics or whatever. And you know, those kind of started piling up. And um, it did start when we were about in I want to say like early eighth grade is when we first started getting some of those things in the mail. Um, we were just really excited. So Taylor and I had always said, you know, we would love to go to college together. We don't have, um, you know, we're not going separately. We're going to go for sure together. Um, and that was something that Marty would let 
coaches know from off the bat, like, hey, like, if you want Taylor, you've got to have Tatum. If you want Tatum, you're getting Taylor. Um, so that was kind of interesting to see who was still interested in wanting us to come play for their team. Um, but yeah, gosh, the recruiting process, gosh, it's so, it was so different. It was so different. Yeah, you answered my, I was going to ask next, were you and Taylor kind of a package deal? Yep. Obviously yep, from, you were. From um, the go, yep. What was it like when um, you kind of realized that Nebraska wanted both of you and it was, you know, it's such a revered program, such a revered coach, and, and they wanted both of you? Yeah, um, we had talked to all of their coaches since we were young. So we would always give, you know, um, we would call them on our way to pitching lesson every single Tuesday night. I would talk to Coach Sipple. I would talk to Coach Ravel. Um, we were talking to Jen Oji back when she was the hitting coach there and then ended up um, switching coaches to Diane Miller. So we were always in contact with them pretty much every single week. Um, and we just built a relationship as to who we are as people, who they are as people, um, you know, kind of where we wanted to see ourselves growing up, who we wanted to be when we were older. You know, at, at times, yeah, it was about softball, um, but most of the time it wasn't. It was about our family. It was about um, what we were interested in. You know, it, it went so much deeper than who we were um, on the field as opposed to who we were off the field. Um, <laughs> It was funny, I look back now, we kind of struggled um, kind of figuring out where we wanted to go. We just didn't want to, I guess we didn't want to make a, the wrong choice. Um, so we had literally big boards, like poster boards um, of pros and cons and what we loved about each school that we were looking at, um, what we didn't really like. So we it, we took a long time to figure out where we were going. And I'm, I'm kind of shocked that we had people interested in us after um you know four or five months of trying to make a decision so <laughs> what was the one thing that was the tipping point for nebraska you said you had these big boards and all these different pros and cons when you were looking at nebraska what was that one thing that you guys kept going back to that, that um, made you decide that was the place good question um so honestly for taylor it was kind of like a moment a hot like an aha moment and she just woke up one day and was like you know what I want to go to Nebraska. Like, that's where I want to be. And I kind of had the same feeling as well after I just, like, we got to know who the coaches were. I was like, you know what? I feel like we're already part of their family. I feel like I know who they are. The girls were kind of reaching out here and there. And we just got a feeling like we can envision ourselves there um, growing up. And that's who we wanted to surround ourselves with. And you did so many great things in Nebraska, the both of you did. When you look back at your time at Nebraska, what are some of the fondest memories you have of, of that softball team and, and being with that program? Oh, man, there's so many. Um, obviously, going to the World Series, the 2013 year, my junior year, um, that was a blast. Oh, my gosh, I wish I could go back. Um, I think that year, looking back at that team, um, we just had those intangibles. Um, we had great team chemistry. We all kind of understood who each other were. Um, you know, we had so much fun on the field. We trusted each other every single day. We knew that we were gonna show up and compete every single day. We knew that we were gonna give it our all and we didn't have to question that ever. So I think that that was a very special team in that aspect of like, we just, we trust each other and we had so much fun. Um, we were playing for each other. Um, so that year was really, really special. Um, also that year was a first, um, my first year of being an All-American. Um, I actually, I, I don't talk about it a lot, but I got the yips um, when I was a senior, in, a senior in high school. And it was terrible, <laughs> anyone who's been through it. It's uh, not a great experience to go through mentally and physically. Um, and I finally started to mentally kind of um, get through that more so at the towards the end of my sophomore year of college. So I went through it for a long time. Um, but that's, you know, that sophomore year into like my sophomore summer, I basically just gutted myself and had to look in the mirror and say, you know, what, I want to get through this. I'm going to, I'm, 
I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And that's when I truly, truly trusted Sipple and Reville um, with whatever it was that they needed me to do. And um, when I found out I was in All-American my junior year, I just broke down in tears. Um, it was a really cool moment. I found out the day before we started the World Series and with my whole team and everyone was just super, super happy for me. Um, but I was just happy in the fact that I did something for my team. Um, I did whatever I needed to do to get better um, for them and to be able to compete out there for them. So it wasn't an accolade that I wanted to get personally. It was something that I wanted to do so that I can be the best pitcher for my team. Um, so yeah, those are one of my moments, yeah. You said growing up that you and Taylor always wanted to go to the same school. So that you did, and you went through Nebraska. Did it meet all your expectations going to school together and, and being on the same team? I mean, what, what was that like? Not too many people get to go through that with their sister, nonetheless, their twin sister. Right. No, it was, it was incredible. Um, since the day we had gotten on the campus to the day we left, um, it was incredible. It was awesome. I mean, we had so many amazing people helping us, not only on the field, but academically. Um, we, it was kind of cool because we always growing up, we had the same classes in high school, um, same friends, you know, we did all the same things. We were always together. But when we entered college, we started to realize what our own paths were. Um, so we got to kind of see ourselves kind of grow individually a little bit more um, than we ever have been or had done before. So um, that was, that was in itself a unique situation because, you know, we didn't, we didn't know what it would be like to kind of uh, start to get in our own path. So she went, you know, she went one way, I went the other, and we kind of just watched ourselves grow individually. That was a really cool experience. What, if you had to kind of describe the personality of Nebraska softball while you were there in the program, uh, how would you kind of describe them? Oh, man. That, like, as a, the team as a whole? Yeah, as the team, as the program, the like, the, yeah. Oh, man, we were, like, blue-collar, just gritty. Um, man, we, um... So sophomore year, we didn't make it to postseason. And then junior year, we made it to the World Series. So obvious, honestly, like, we had to grow. We had a lot to do. That, that uh, my junior year, we had, I want to say it was like eight freshmen who came in and just were, just were hungry and ready to go and change the program. So we had a lot of girls with a, with a great mindset of, like, we're going to make a difference and we're going to change this program and take it to where we want to go. We're going to leave it better than how we found it. I think that that was the overall mindset of like, we're not messing around. We want to change this place. We want to make Nebraska softball known again. And I think that's what drove us so much of every day going into practice of what our goal was um, to get better every day. You spent a lot of time with Coach Ravel. Uh, well, I'm going to ask, one of the most res respected coaches, what's kind of your favorite Coach Ravel story that, that happened over the four years or, or favorite memory with her? Oh my gosh. Um, oh man. Favorite memory. I have a lot with her, but, um, she got really, really upset with me. Um, we were actually in California. She got really upset. And, um, I, uh, she had told me one time in practice, like, Hey, you know what? If you don't feel like you want to be out there, for some reason, you know, going through like the whole yips thing. And she was like, you know, if you don't feel like you don't want to be out there, come out. And I was like, okay. You know, I was like, I'm never going to do that. Right. So <laughs> I end up, I end up running off the field and I was like, no, I can't, I can't do this. It was in between an inning. And, um, that was like one of the crazy experiences because I don't know that she ever thought that I would do that, but it was something where I felt like, you know, it, if I can't give my all, then I can't do this. And she got upset, obviously, and she was just, like, kind of flabbergasted up to, like, whoa, she actually did that, you know. But we had um, we had one of the greatest conversations after that, after the game, for about, gosh, 20, 30 minutes, just talking about where I needed to go and what the steps were to um, commit myself to being better. So that was probably one of my – one of my um, – most standout moments with her of like she was angry but I think she went through the steps of like okay where are we going forward with this how are we going to make this happen so um yeah well the fact that she took that time to have that conversation with you right. was that one of the moments I mean you talked about it you started to really trust her to get through those yips was that one of those moments when 
the trust in her kind of really got built strong? Yes, absolutely. She, from the day that we stepped on the, um, the field at Nebraska, Taylor had always kind of called my games. Um, and I think she, she gave us that leeway of like, okay, Taylor's going to do it still, but I kind of want to be in the conversation. Um, and from that point on, it was more so she led us and we gave her the information that we needed. And it was, she wasn't fully in, in control. We weren't fully in control, but we had that great um, communication in between. So that's for sure when it had fully started at that point. Then you both get drafted by the MPF. Yeah. Um, I've talked to a lot of people and they all say that was kind of a goal they never thought they really had until the draft came up. Yeah. Did you kind of have that feeling when, when, you know, you got drafted that this is a goal now and, and I didn't think it was a goal maybe back when I was in high school? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I didn't really even know that there was a pro softball league um, until a couple of years into college. So when we had heard about the, like, maybe getting drafted or the possibility of actually going to play pro, um, we were like, yeah, I mean, what's it going to hurt? You know, it's, it's a three month long season in the middle of summer, you know, how much, like that would be so much fun. We, but we didn't put that pressure on ourselves to make that happen. Um, so actually Taylor was the one that got drafted and then I was drafted as a free agent. Um, so it was that that process in itself to see Taylor's name come up and watch her get drafted on live TV. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is something that like could be could be a thing for us. Um, obviously Taylor, but um, when we sat down, Taylor was, again was like, if I go somewhere, like I want you and you ended up not getting drafted, whatever, that's fine. But I want you to come with me and I want you to try and, and, and get to the same team I am. And I would, uh, Fortunately, that night, um, I was called by um, the Pennsylvania Rebellion, who um, are no longer there, but um, it was, I mean, it was such a cool experience. You don't, yeah, you, you didn't, you weren't really playing for pro, you were playing for college, and when that came up, we were like, you know what, if, if the opportunity presents itself, we'll for sure do it. And you kind of came into the league in the height of it. I mean, they were, they were starting to get six teams, they had TV yeah. deals. What was that experience like? I mean, you guys... Definitely went through it. There were struggles to being a pro athlete in softball, um, but you were doing it so the future of softball could grow. What, what was it like going through as a professional softball player in the MPF? It was definitely a different in the aspect of we didn't have um, – we didn't have coaches around us all the time telling us what we needed to do, where we needed to be all the time, um, what our protocol kind of was. Um, we were just surrounded by pro athletes that had kind of been there before, and our coaches just expected us to be ready. Um, you know, our practices were not nearly as long as we had expected, um, you know, from college. We had to make sure we were ready at all times. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I struggled with that. I, I struggled with not having that kind of structure. Um, I kind of was more lenient with myself that I should have been, um, you know, and, but go, looking back, I think that that helped me in the next years of my pro league. Um, but, you know, you're surrounded by people who are like, Hey, you need to you need to figure out what you need to do to get yourself ready. You're a pro athlete now, um, and you need to take responsibility of that. You made you made yourself a pretty good professional career. Played for a couple of different teams. Yeah. Um, and you won a Coles Cup. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh huh. You know, getting to finally kind of win a championship. I know you got so close in college. Mm -hmm. What was it like kind of getting a, a, you know, working hard, getting a trophy at the elite level and, and winning a championship there? Um, it took everybody. I mean, same thing like it was in college. It took all of us to buy into what we wanted to do. Our backs were against the wall that year that we won the Coles Cup. And, um, man, it was just, it was fun because, you know, you think it's really only – the people on the field but everyone who was on that field would tell you otherwise that it was it was all about everybody buying in um and it was it was so fun to just see how hard everybody was working and how hard you know the girls like girls were on the field off the field in the dugout whatever the role was we all took it head on 100 percent um 
And again, we had that chemistry. Again, I mean, this season is only three months long. You know, we don't get we got we don't get to know each other for that long, but we connected um, off the bat. You know, same thing. We just took our roles and ran with it. And whatever we was asked of us, we were ready. And um, we just competed so hard. It was it was awesome. What was kind of the biggest adversity that you faced during your pro career and had to kind of get over to to help it continue? Um, really it was about that structure for me and figuring out what I needed to do. You know, I had such an awesome experience with Coach Sipple and Coach Reville, um in my back pocket all the time, but I was, you know, on my own now. So I was basically my own pitching coach. I could, you know, I could ask questions of the girls who were on staff at either Rebellion or Chicago. Um, But a lot of times I was kind of like, you know, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to figure this out. And I think it took me a little bit too long where I should have asked more questions. I should have, I should have done a couple more things. Um, But I think that was, that was it of making sure that um, I'm getting my own work done without having to ask someone else. Not that I needed a crutch, not that I needed someone to always be there, but um, I was just used to that, you know? So I think that that, that was my biggest hurdle of just making sure I was getting the things done that I needed to consistently all the time. And now that uh, your sister is still going, doing her thing at yep. national team and mm-hmm. Uh, how proud are you just to watch what she's doing and, and to see that you two are on different paths and she's still killing it? And uh, how proud does that make you as, as a sister? Well, my, clearly, it makes me super proud, USA softball. Um, man, I um, there's no words to describe how I feel when it comes to Taylor and all the hard work that she puts in, um, all the stress on her body, everything that – um, who she is and all the opportunities that she's had. She's just done with grace and humility and she's just been such a great human being through it all. Um, she's, she's worked so hard. She has the biggest heart there is and I'm not surprised whatsoever of her ability to make the USA team and to continue on her career. Gosh, she deserves every single thing that has come her way and I know that um, you know, this year has been very, very different for her of having to um, stay on track with training and kind of figure out that path. Of Obviously, you don't know what's going on with COVID. But um, gosh, she's just been, it's been so cool to see her um, start USA and do all the things that she has been doing. And she's, uh, she keeps up with us all the time. You know, our family's super close. So she always keeps us in the circle of how she's doing and what she's doing and things like that. So I, I, I could not be more proud of her. You know, the last couple of years, professional softball has looked a lot different than it did when you, when you started, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of division in professional softball, but this summer with everything that happened, a kind of sense of unity came back to professional softball. Mm-hmm. How proud were you as a former pro to kind of see the softball world kind of unite and stand up for themselves as a softball community? and maybe hopefully some unity going forward in the professional softball world. I, it was a beautiful thing to see. I mean, the, I mean, what happened wasn't awesome, wasn't great, um, but it brought attention to what needed to be addressed. And I think that the girls involved in that situation really, um, really united and had so much class with how they went about it as well. Um, You know, they just made a stand and they used their voices and it really shook up the softball community as to like, hey, there are some things going on that that just aren't okay and we're going to speak about it and we're going to be strong about it and we're going to let people know that um, it's time to move forward in a better way and um, no... I, I believe the softball community is seriously so big and there's so many people out there and to see to see the responses from the community it was honestly incredible. I mean my Twitter feed was just going and going and going and I would see stuff and then, then on Facebook, you know, I just saw it everywhere. And um, that made me proud because I know that, you know, I don't know what I would do, would have done in that situation. I'm sure it would have been exactly what happened there. And but to see those girls just the the big names of softball do that for the community and to stand up for people. Um, it was, it was incredible. 
now we talked about what your sister's up to now. What, let's talk about what you're up to now and, and put a highlight on, on what you're kind of doing and, and the things that you're up to now in life. Yeah, um, so I will be going into my third year as the assistant coach at Omaha, Nebraska Omaha. It's 45 minutes from Lincoln, so I haven't really gone very far. Um, I am... I'm starting to get really interested in like body movements and kind of the kinesiology of how body moves and works. Um, so that's a little bit of something that is um, driving my interest more and more to learn more about the body, to learn more about how we can put the pieces together so I can better help my pitchers. Um, you know, I'm giving lessons, I'm doing CrossFit, I'm working out. This is just the same kind of thing that I've been doing for a while, but um, yeah, I'm here in Omaha and it's great. Uh, what, what, what was it like kind of switching from player to coach and switching that mentality? Um, oh, wow. I think it was just like, I was, um, so going from player to coach, I think I was very much okay of knowing, like, I no longer want to be the player who's on the field doing it. I want to be able to watch the players on the field perform and, um, that was like my biggest mindset change of like, I'm still competitive as a coach. I'm very competitive as a coach still, but it was a very different competitive as like, I want to give them the best. Um, I want to give my players the best opportunity to win the best opportunity to succeed. And that changed my mindset of like, it's not me who's out there. It's you who's out there. And what can I do to help you with that? Um, so I think that that, that mindset change of um, wanting to see someone else do it and not myself that was that was where the mindset changed um coaching is so fun it also i didn't realize how much stress it can put on you like you think players as a player you would get kind of stressed but you're in the moment you don't worry about that kind of stuff and you put it on your coaches to be stressed out <laughs> so uh talk about the, the the advice you can give and i think as a coach you can really give good advice on this to the players right now you know, recruiting has changed this summer. You coaches at the Division One level can't go out to, to see players, yeah. and they're trying to expose themselves any way they can, especially the class of 2022. What kind of advice are you giving these players right now that's going through summer, trying to still get recruited and get themselves exposed? Yeah, um, so, you know, the live feeds that we've been able to kind of watch online and, and stuff, those are those have been great. Some of them haven't worked as well as we would, we would want them to. But, you know, from that, making sure that you're getting clips of yourself in games, um, still continuing to kind of get clips of yourself in practice when you're working on things. Um, I think the biggest thing is to control what you can control. I'm sure that's what a lot of people are thinking of. You have to keep a positive mindset right now because there's so many ups and downs going on in this world. And if we don't continue to stay on the positive mindset path, you're going to get caught up in it and you're going to miss opportunities to get better. So this is such an awesome time to actually become creative and to come innovative and in how you get better. I mean, throw, put, you know, put some socks together and make a softball and kind of work on your fundamentals inside. Um, get a tennis ball, throw it against the wall, just like you kind of were when you were a kid. I mean, there's so many things that you could probably think of, like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm 15, 16 years old, I'm never going to do that because I'm not a kid. Well, here's your chance to really be creative um, in the times that you don't really have to go, you, ca you can't go out to a field, you can't play against somebody else. Um, but keeping that positive mindset for sure and um, still connect it, trying to connect with those coaches, send those emails, um, making sure you're getting good clips of yourself that we could see, um, and stay positive and be creative. Now, for any travel coaches watching this, what you said the live feed, some of them have worked, some of them haven't. What have been the things that coaches do you think look for in the live feeds? What things worked and what things didn't? That way, if, if this becomes a reality in the future, uh, they, they can kind of get better with the live feeds. Yeah. Um, you know, just the connection, obviously, sometimes that doesn't work, and that's not necessarily something they can control, but, um, you know, making sure that we could kind of see numbers of kids who are out on the field, sometimes they get mixed up, or we're not really sure, um, I don't know if there's someone who could kind of give, like, a update of here, you know, this person went to third, or this person went to right, um, someone in between innings kind of making sure that, you know, we know that, 
um, that might be happening on broadcasts that I haven't seen, but that would be very helpful just to have like an updated, updated um, information every single inning. Um, kind of things like that, just making sure we can see the field. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those are the main concerns. One of the topics that has been talked about on YS in the last couple of weeks with high school athletics up in the air, you know, some states are doing some things, some states are doing other things. And the topic is if a state shuts down, would you move your kid to a different state to, to play high school softball or to, to, to get onto a field if, if, if their sports are shut down? You traveled a lot for softball. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you ever consider kind of if, if, if you were playing and your state shut down, would you consider getting up and trying to get to a different state to get yourself on a field? Oh, man. Um, that's a loaded question that I'm not sure that I, if, if I, I would like, go. I mean, the circumstances I, provided that you could, you know, financially and everything else, if everything right. was aligned, do you um, think that's a smart decision? Gosh, I think that's tough because you want, I mean, you obviously want the best for your kid and put them in the best situation. Um, I mean, if that's something that you can do and financially you're able to do, um, your family's good to, good to go with, I mean, why not? But I would say if you're trying to, if you're putting yourself in a little bit of a bind to do that, um, I feel like there are just, there are ways that you can get around that without playing, um, you know, whether it be some live hitting against one pitcher, one hitter, um, something of that aspect. I think there's more, I think you can, you can make more things happen than put yourself in that kind of situation. But hey, you know what, if people can do that, sure, why, why not? <laughs> um, so let, let this enlighten us to, before we let you go. Yeah. Quarantine kept us in the house. You know, what, what, what was your kind of favorite quarantine in-house activity during uh, coronavirus? Um, I love puzzles. So I've been doing a lot of puzzles um, and reading. I don't, I don't get a chance to read up on mystery books that I love. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. And then also hanging out with my dog because I love my dog. So <laughs> Dogs and quarantine go together really well. Right. <laughs> and they're going to be really shocked when things are back to normal and all of a sudden right? mm -hmm. we can't spend all the time with them. Tatum, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, taking the time and joining us this week. We appreciate it. And uh, we definitely look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Thank you so much for having me.